Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate Easter Sunday. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Russell Pollitt. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, with your spirit. and welcome to you all as we come together to celebrate this day of resurrection, this Easter Sunday. We come before the Lord, knowing that we are weak, and yet our risen Lord gives us strength and courage. For the times we have failed, now let's turn to the Lord, asking for mercy and forgiveness but most of all, the courage to be faithful witnesses to the resurrection. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, your word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come again in glory to judge both the living and the dead. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on Amen. earth peace, peace to people, people of good will. We, we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. And let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. We ask this. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter opened his mouth and said, You know the word which was proclaimed throughout all Judea beginning from Galilee, after the baptism which John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him, and we are witnesses to all that he did, both in the country 
of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him manifest, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God to be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. This This is is the day day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be be glad. glad. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. His right hand is exalted. The Lord's right hand has done mighty deeds. I shall not die, I shall live, and recount the deeds of the Lord. This This is is the day that the Lord Lord has made. made. Let Let us rejoice and be glad. glad. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This This is is the day day that the Lord has made. made. Let Let us rejoice and be glad. And and be be glad. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brethren, if you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Christ, our Paschal Lamb, has been sacrificed. Let us, therefore, celebrate the festival of the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb early while it was still dark and saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter then came out with the other disciple, and they went toward the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. And stooping to look in, he saw the linen cloths lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying and the napkin which had been on his head, not lying with the linen cloths, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed, for as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise from the dead. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't it interesting that on this Easter Sunday, we do not hear that Jesus is risen. We hear about an empty tomb. We hear about people, Mary of Magdalene, Peter, and the beloved disciple going to the tomb and discovering that it is empty. We are not told that Jesus is risen. We are told that they didn't know he must rise from the dead. We are told that the beloved disciple went in and he saw and believed. In all the Gospels, we are told of what people discovered, and not just simply people, what the woman discovered. But we are never, ever given an account of the resurrection itself. You see, because the resurrection is, and I know we don't like saying this, a mystery. It's something that takes place between Jesus and God the Father, which for us defies description. By its very nature, resurrection is outside of human experience. But there are a number of things in the Gospels pertaining to the resurrection that tell us about these mysterious events and what they bring about. Notice how the woman in all the Gospels are the first at the empty tomb. And in some encounters, they are the first to meet the risen Jesus. The men all fail when the women are faithful. Since the Last Supper, you will notice that none of the disciples have shown up except for John the Beloved at the foot of the cross. It is the woman who go with Jesus to Calvary. It is the woman who wait at the cross. It is the woman who go to the tomb. The men are absent, I'm afraid to say, and the women are present with him through his passion, his death, and his resurrection. You see, the resurrection is both an historical moment and yet also a mystery which transcends our human experience. It's a mystery because it brings about a new order in creation, a new order by which, through baptism, we are invited to participate in. God's action changes the norm. It changes the created order. It changes the order of life and redirects everything towards the risen Christ. After the resurrection, the first change we are presented with is that it is the woman who have not been heard at all in the gospel that become the center of of the story. They journeyed with Jesus, no doubt, day in and day out. And yet we did not hear about them because that simply was not the order in which things were done. Now they are the first witnesses to the resurrection. And so the empty tomb immediately creates a new way in which these human beings that are there relate to each other and relate to Jesus. There's something else I want you to notice in that story. We are told that they run. In fact, the word run occurs a number of times. Mary, Simon, Peter, and the other disciple are all running. I wonder what John is trying to say to us in his gospel by using that word run. Is it something about the urgency of participating and bringing about the new order, the new relationships, the new creation that the resurrection brings into being? We, like the women and the men at the tomb, are invited to bring about 
this new order. Not sometime in the future, but right now, today. To live in a way that is distinctive. To commit ourselves on this day of resurrection to living a way that is distinctive. To live with the mindset of Jesus himself. To take on the attitudes of Jesus himself. Before all else, the resurrection we celebrate today reminds us of the words God speaks to us at baptism. You are my beloved, we hear. We are invited to reclaim that belovedness. Not that some are beloved and others are not, but each and every human being on this day of resurrection is the beloved of God. It is the beloved disciple who first, we are told, sees and believes. And all of us are invited into that belovedness to see and to believe. It was Pope Emeritus, Emeritus Benedict who said, We thrive on love, bereft of it we languish. Or as something I read recently said, You will never look into the eyes of another that God has already not stared into. It is the belovedness that we are to claim today because we, like John, are invited to see and believe. And knowing our own belovedness, we are sent out to those who we are told did not know the scripture, did not know the good news of resurrection, those who have lost hope, those who have been crushed by the burdens that life has laid upon them. We're invited to offer them good news, offer them hope, and where we can, share their burdens. You see, when their burdens are lifted through our witness to the resurrection, through our witness to the good news, then indeed, mysteriously, the Lord has risen in us and amongst us. It is our actions after the celebration of the resurrection that tells if we really do see and believe. And so the resurrection bids us to run out to others with good news. What Jesus began at the Last Supper is the good news that we offer, washing the soiled feet of the nobodies and the demonized of our world. In history right now, we make the resurrection a reality if we choose to run with the good news of this resurrection. If we choose to bring about this new created order in the way that we relate to others with dignity and respect. If we do not, others will not see and believe. God has left it up to us. Others will only see and believe based on the quality of our witness. What will your witness be from today? And so on this day of resurrection, friends, I invite you to join me now as we recommit ourselves to being living witnesses through, again, pronouncing our baptismal promises, renewing those promises. And so, brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we walk with him in newness of life. I ask you now to renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced, Saint, renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in his holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan? I do. And all his works? I do. And all his empty show? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? 
I do. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us the forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers before the Lord, asking Him for what it is that we need and the Church needs so that we can be credible witnesses of the resurrection. For the Church, that we may radiate the light and life of Christ each day and confidently live as daughters and sons of God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all the human family, that Christ's victory over death may bring hope and healing to all who are burdened by poverty, disease, prejudice, and fear, that the so-called nobodies and demonized of our world will find hope and joy through our witness to the love of Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are confused or doubting their faith, that they may experience the risen Lord and discover the truth through God's love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For healing of our hearts and relationships, that the risen Lord will open the path to reconciliation and healing amongst families, communities, and co-workers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all who are burdened by sickness, disease, or chronic illness, that the healing spirit of the, of the risen Christ may bring light and wholeness to them. Lord, hear us. Lord, Lord, graciously hear us. For peace throughout the world, that the risen Lord will guide the human family away from violence and toward new efforts for peace in all areas of war and violence. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord our God, on this day of resurrection, we see and we believe. And because of this, we offer you these, our prayers, knowing that you answer them as you know best, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, fruit of the earth and work of our human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Yes, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of our human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed 
let's pray, sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice and the sacrifice and efforts of our lives may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Creator. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and good of all God's holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, he restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory, as without end they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the offering of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely and failing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, Buti our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family you have called before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, 
through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours for ever and ever. Amen. The risen Lord Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who set your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And Let's take a moment now to offer those around us a sign of God's peace wherever you are. If you're alone, maybe you can just pray for a moment for peace. Let's pray together. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. My sisters, my brothers, behold Jesus, the risen Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sin of the world. How blessed are we who are called to share in this supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us, our families, our friends, and all people, to life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So before the final blessing, I'd like to take this opportunity to wish you, wherever you are, you and your loved ones, your friends, a very happy and holy Easter from all of us here at the Jesuit Institute. Thank you for joining us in these days of Tridium as we celebrate together this most important part of the life of our Christian faith, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close. May you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast. Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth. The Mass is ended. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.